This is the 1981 Montgomery Ward model GEN 3995A. The OEM on this is Silver of Japan, aka Shin Shirasuna. And uh, in the US, we did not get any silver branded boom boxes, but instead we got them under the Montgomery Ward brand. Whereas, say, Canada got the silver branded units uh, under the actual manufacturer. Um, this may seem familiar to some longtime followers of this channel. I got this way back in July of 2008. I got this at a garage sale four or three, three weeks ago for five bucks. It, uh, it is a 1981 boom box. getting put away for many many years obviously until I got around to it till now it needed the obvious uh, rubber belt replacements on all components but uh, and the controls needed to clean badly but once that was done it's like brand new it just I never got around to doing it till now and I always made a promise to myself if I really want something but I can't get to it, I will put it away and keep it and find a way until I get to it. And this is really relevant now, given my latest thing with boom boxes, as well as learning about all the different manufacturers and so forth. Um, this is a, a relatively heavy unit for its size because it's well made and has a lot of metal parts in it. Uh, the cassette deck is pretty beefy too. But the one thing you're probably already observed while sitting here, looking at it, is it has an 8-track player, in addition to a cassette recorder. By 1981, this to have 8-track on a new product was relatively rare, because by at least 1980, you know, they peaked around 1978 8-tracks, and then died off very quickly after that in favor of the compact cassette. So by 1981, it was kind of rare to even see an 8-track deck on anything other than a cheap thing like a Sound Design or Yorks, which this is neither. One and a half watts per channel. It is loud and it has an audio output level meter because that's what those are. It's not a VU meter. It's actually po actual output power. As you turn up, it'll start bouncing with the music um, but it does have stereo microphones your standard tape counter uh, non soft eject but we'll get into what the internals look like shortly and what I had to do it yes it needed new belts but this also has a lot of rubber tires unless they're cracked or turned to goo you don't need to replace those Take some 400 grit sandpaper to it, sand it down, clean it, and it'll work just like brand new every time. So here's the eight track mechanism in the Montgomery Ward boombox. Uh, I know they made eight track players as late as the late 80s. Uh, Radio Shack had one standalone. And just like that, I got the entire board out. It, everything was socketed, just unplugs. Yeah, these were designed to be worked on. So, but there's nothing wrong with this board. I'm just going to clean the um, record play switch right there. You can see that's where the tuner slips on. 
But this is what it looks like now that I have access to the tape deck. I am not familiar with this particular tape transport, but just like all the ones from this era, they're very solidly built. It's a big heavy flywheel. See that belt's a little slippery. I am gonna change it. And let's see, we got the motor, and you got the real table drive belt right there. And let's see, we got some rubber tires. I can just sand those down, get a new surface. And tape counter belt is very loose. So that's what we have to deal with here. Everything else is fine. I am going to probably pop out the speakers so I can uh, clean the front. I usually take an alcohol pad to the chrome dust cap, and then I follow, finish up with Novus on a Q-tip. And it comes out like brand new and nice and shiny again. Yeah, interesting on the flywheel, pulling it off, I use a piece of rubber as the, on top I usually have a washer there to keep dust out. Well, there you have, um, You've got mail. <sighs> Anyways, that goes on top, so there's a good solid rubber washer. Now I get the flywheel off. And then there's this idler wheel to get it off. There's a plastic uh, cover. You just pull that off. And then this should lift out. And it does. Let's see if I can get this old belt out. When I try, see, I have, since I said I had this box since like 2008 and never got around to doing anything with it. Long story, but now that I am, I. When I took it out of storage, it had a little trouble getting going at first, but it started to play off speed, a little fluttery. So, and then that just leaves uh, only one other belt, and that's that tape counter belt, which is barely hanging on. So right here, you have me taking out the uh, one idler. And like I said, I take 400 grit sandpaper to it, and just to reveal a new surface, then I just clean it with alcohol. I mean, I take an extra time and put rubber cleaner, rejuvenator on her just to help. And uh, you don't need to do that, but it really mm, brings back the black stickiness of it. And I've never had an issue doing it like that. Yeah, now I just uh, put the um, flywheel back in, lubricated it with some oil, drop of oil, and it's very free spinning. Brand new belt installed now. Yeah, you see how they used to be made. They had nice, heavy flywheels, very stable tape speed. So there it is with the brand new flat belt on it. Has a Mitsumi motor. And I gave the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see. Put a little bit of grease on that before you put the thrust bearing plate on. And that one there is interesting. It just bends some tabs to hold it into place. And there's that rubber piece I told you. You just press down till it touches the bearing. And there it is after doing a speed calibration of 1,000 hertz. Currently don't have any 3 kilohertz test tones to work with, so uh, there you go. I'm using one of those tapes. It's still pretty accurate. So one last look at that tape transport before we put the cir main circuit board back in. Yeah, it's very well made, very beefy, heavy flywheel. I know you probably saw the tape counter doing like, like, do -do 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 like that. Don't know what's causing it because I double checked it, so it may just be the clutch doing that. I don't know, but it'll probably work itself out. But in a way, that's kind of a fascinating thing is taking something that's been abandoned for decades and bringing it back to life. Kind of like an old car, you know, it has these weird things it does, and then all of a sudden it starts working fine. Even though you already looked at it, so it's the same thing with this type of stuff. It, not just mechanically, but electrically. 
yes, electrolytics have to reform if they're still good, but everything else seems to just do odd things in some cases, and then all of a sudden you leave it on a long time and it starts working fine all of a sudden. It's been fine since. It's very interesting. All right, and there it is with the brand new flat belt on the 8-track. The other one was a bit, didn't have much grippiness to it. And that one actually has a Mitsumi mechanically governed motor. And I'll get into that later. But I uh, cleaned all the surfaces. And um, I don't think it's ever been serviced since that was brand new. There it is reinstalled. It actually just mounts to the back cover. And it has a TAM radio transformer. Very good transformers used in audio equipment. But as you can see by the features on the front, it has automatic level control, obviously, and auto shutoff system. So you come up top here, and I like how these are colored. When I got this, this thing was so dirty that I thought all the buttons were colored like white. It was basically just dust um, embedded in the circle after many decades. So when it's all cleaned up, you're supposed to have a white for stop, a green for play and a red for record. Then you have the eight track program button. And uh, that's the other thing. It is strictly play only. There is no fast forward as in speeding up the motor, just play. Uh, power on, off, and sleep. All sleep means is you can operate the cassette recorder on the front and then it'll shut off completely when it's done. But all other functions like recording, radio, an 8-track, the power switch has to be turned on. So, Montgomery Ward Digital LED Meter System Super Stereo Sound. Has a tone control, balance, volume, function control, radio, cassette, 8-track, mode, stereo, and stereo wide. That's for all modes. And FM stereo, FM, and AM. So, the label on the 8-track face, the front of the 8-track face is you. But going in, bam, there's your inside. The 8-track deck has a Mitsumi branded motor, but it's a mechanically governed motor. So the speed is not adjustable on it, but the speed actually is right where it needs to be, even after belt replacement. But given the nature of mechanically governed motors, you can hear how loud they are. Uh, the tape deck has a Mitsumi motor as well, but it's a standard electronically governed motor. Turn it like this. The power cord is original. I went to do a search on eBay. And I'll just say, you know, this is a very, very common model on eBay. And you should pick, you're able to get one of these relatively cheap. There's a mint in the box one on eBay for $800. It ain't worth that much. I'm sorry. But that said, I used it as reference for what it would look like. And yes, this is original because it has this exact same cord uh, wrap holder right there. But on the side, you have your beat cancel to adjust your AC bias oscillator while recording for recording AM broadcasts. Basically, if it whistles or has a beat pattern to it, you turn that and it gets rid of it. As uh, DCN for vehicle use, ACN as you saw, external speakers, which is four to eight ohms. Let's see, headphones, auxiliary line level input, and microphone left and right. Also notice on a lot of these boom boxes, you'll have these two empty holes here. That's for microphones with a remote switch. This does not have any remote uh, electronic remote pause on it, so that piece just simply inserts into the unit but not connects to anything. This allows you to use that microphone with this unit. The handle on this is actual metal with chrome, and, but this piece here is plastic. That's standard, but anyways, it's real heavy metal connection right here. It's very sturdy, very solid. This is the back of the unit. Now, I know this will say it is made in Taiwan. Uh, apparently, um, Shin Shir Suna had a plant there, too, because it's not made by anybody else. It's still them. 
all silver branded or Shin Shirasuna boom boxes have this type of battery cover. I have another one I have to demonstrate that's very similar. I actually did a video on another silver Montgomery Ward boom box. 6D batteries on the back. You have your azimuth and height adjustment for the 8-track. I'll get into that in a minute, as well as some other things. And that's pretty much it. I think first I'll just start with the cassette operation. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times I get boom boxes or tape decks or anything, and they usually have a tape left in them. And I usually just if they use these tapes as test tapes, so if they get damaged or whatever, it's no big loss. Well, this is what this one is. This is the tape it came with way back in 2008. The copyright date on it is from 1993, so whoever owned this was still using this in the 90s. These were very, are very well-made units. Um, but now, this, this guy's what, 41 years old as of uh, 2022. We'll turn the power on. Yeah, it does a, it comes on. Now, when I first got it, I didn't clean the heads yet or anything, so the sound was drifting. I think I was trying to do recording, and it sounded terrible. That's all been fixed. Uh, it, it, the tape deck was probably never cleaned in its life. But these older tape decks that have the proper-sized, you know, pinch roller, you know, the full-size pinch roller, don't really have problems with eating tapes. Um, might get some wild flutter or some tape skewing, but when they got really bad, but those tannishing mechanisms, if they're really tiny pinch roller, those things, if those things got just a little bit dirty, those things would eat tapes like crazy. I hated those. Those are very essential for keeping clean. But anyways, let's see what I can play on here from because there's me on here from 2008 uh, about the copyright police entering the picture. So let's try this. Okay, I can explain that one real quick. That was an eight, yes, you can record eight track to cassette. And that was with the A-Track azimuth being really far out. So the A-Track sounded muffled and like garbage. And the tape deck wasn't faring too... The cassette deck wasn't faring too much better either. It was like... I guess the tape was skewing a little bit. Or the head was clogged or something. It did not sound very good. Seventies at seven. Ninety-four point five three WS. Stereo record test with built-in microphone. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Oh yeah. I'll tell you you can see where the actual pre-recorded part is, and it sounds fine. And that recording to me from two thousand eight. I wonder which box fan I was running in the background. That is the one thing about using all rubber idler tires to couple everything. It is very quiet. All reason for using, at least using a rubber idler tire on playback is to minimize vibration transfer, you know. But eventually everything ended up just being geared and, you know, cheapened out. But yeah, this thing is silent. Now, I'm not big in the country at all, but... One thing I will say is, every time I hear this song, I think of that scene in uh, Terminator 2. Guitars, Cadillac, hillbilly music. Before going on further, uh, let's do radio operation. Up top here, power's already on. So, band FM stereo. Have it in regular stereo mode, and you flip this to radio. Bam. Let me see the tune and FM stereo light on. One thing I will bring up. One thing to I quickly identify. It's a silver Shin Shirasuna product. Is the antenna will always have a little ball on top. That's just kind of their little trademark. They all have that. 
So, quick demo. That's a bit, see, as this station always was noisy here, you put it on FM, gets rid of that noise. But leave that on. Who's watching us online tonight uh, with the beloved? You'll outgrow your shoes, moving on down the line. We turn a program around like group of five. Associates knows Pittsburgh's workforce is the backbone of our local economy. Everything else, yet are rarely, really. Happy. This is that weird religious station that's crystal clear, but it's broadcast in FM mono. Of Israel, that there is, is a vital ingredient. So this is a 90s era TDK type one tape. So we're gonna press record and play at the same time for solid good thunk. Wait for the leader to pass about two and a half on the tape counter. Also, I'm recording per VUS Life's latest video. This one is driven off the take up reel. So let's see here how many how revolutions does it take? Is it a 2x counter? Okay, it is not a 2x counter, but it's still taken off the uh, take up reel. So let's try this. Mm, to left, left channel test, 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 test. Right channel test, 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 test. And let's see how this came out. Kathunk. Very solid tape deck. For the leader to pass, about two and a half on the tape counter. Also, I'm recording per VUS Life's latest video. This one is driven off the take up reel. So, let's see here how many how revolutions does it take? Is it a 2x counter? Okay, it is not a 2x counter, but it's still taken off the uh, take up reel. So, let's try this. Mm, to left, left channel test, 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 test. Right channel, test, 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 test. And let's see how this came out. So, again, obviously AC bias, obviously sounded great. Uh, stereo separation. But again, using the built-in mics, expect a little more mechanical noise, but there you go. But if it's in a louder environment, you won't hear it. Anyways, um, guess now we could try recording off of the radio. Let me find something we won't get the copyright police on. Ninety-four point five. It gets you through the morning. Gets you through the day. Three. Just fun to listen to. W. A great variety. S. All right. So again, I had to keep it brief because of the copyright police. But here you go. To the day. Three. Just fun to listen to. W. A great variety. S. Another That's classic another hit attempt. sweep starts now on 94.5. Three WS. I abandoned that because I forgot to press record while on the camera and it didn't show me recording it initially so I went back and redid it so I'll rewind that um, 
very stable tape speed and azimuth properly adjusted. And if you're wondering about these um, rather unique tapes, well, let's see, we have Funkadelic Mix, Sounds of the Department Store, 1979, <gasps> TVs. Let's see, we have more Sounds of the Department Store, excellent. And Explosive Dynamite Mix. And if you're wondering about these, uh, this was sent to us by a friend of ours, Fartamark. And if you want, go check out his channel, link in the upper right. He has a lot of unique things like this, such as this 8-track here. That is what we're going to demonstrate. And on the back, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> But it just doesn't stop there. Some more unique goodies we'll eventually get around to. Such as this. Yep, you're seeing this correct. <laughs> this is an actual box for one of those cartridges. And a awesome reel-to-reel. -reel. Ooh, I like this leader on this tape. That is pretty cool. I have a plan. <sighs> so, eight track. Insert. Now, see what I mean? That's normal. That's just a mechanically governed motor. That's the nature of them. But um, it sounds perfectly fine at perfect stable speed and... Turning off the mode switch from 8-track to cassette turns off the 8-track uh, altogether, in addition to, say, pulling it out. Um, but yeah, let's uh, see how our recording came out. And this will also be a good comparison of what it sounded like when I first got it. identical remember from that tape it came with when i first tried it without servicing it how it sounded pretty bad well now it sounds great so we'll do that and i can flick back on the eight track that pretty much sums up this video on the 1981 Montgomery Ward GEN3995A. Rather late boombox with an 8-track, but still awesome nonetheless. Very solidly built, quite heavy. Looks great. Uh, nice brushed aluminum panel behind that. Uh, as you saw, I really got to crank it for that uh, audio output meter to come on. But it is it is loud. Nice and loud boombox. Um, and that's it. Everything works beautifully on it. And the whole time I'm standing here, Harley's just standing there looking out the window. Happy 
bastard. Special shout out and thanks to Liz, our star patron. <laughs> the hell that's a blooper